I would like to send blessings to all the Muslims around the globe and especially see the month of Ramadan, the month of blessings and forgiveness, the month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the gates of heaven for all the believers who fasten this month. And as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam states, O oh people, the month of Allah has come towards you bringing divine blessings, mercy and forgiveness. Today and tonight we have with us a very special guest who insha'Allah join us uh, for the first 10 nights of Ramadan uh, discussing uh, the most emphasized topics within the Holy Quran. Uh, so please welcome with me Sayyid Hussein Al-Qazwini. Assalamu alaikum Sayyid Alaikum Assalamu How are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, how do you find the spiritual atmosphere in Karbala, especially between the two shrines? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa alihi al-Tahirin. To my dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We are, and I don't think uh, I'm exaggerating, exaggerating when I say this, we are in, in paradise, especially mm -hmm. on a night like this. Mm -hmm. uh, the eve of the first of Ramadan uh, for us here in Iraq and for some today was the first of Ramadan people mm -hmm. in North America and other mm -hmm. places thus for some today was the first of Ramadan for others tomorrow is the first of Ramadan tonight is the eve definitely tonight is part of Ramadan and we are right in between the shrines of Imam Hussein and Abdul Fadl Abbas I don't think that you will find a spiritual atmosphere greater than this. Yeah, Alhamdulillah Rabbil uh, As I mentioned, we are going, inshallah, to discuss the most emphasized topics in the Quran. And today, uh, we will discuss and the topic will revolve around uh, orphans in the Holy Quran. Is that right? Yes, inshallah. Uh, so, as we always see in the Holy Quran, Sayyidina, um, the Quran always commands us as Muslims that we should always support and uh, take care of the orphans. So, what's the significance behind such emphasis? First of all, uh, after conducting a thorough study of orphans in the Qur'an, mm -hmm. I saw that the Qur'an speaks of orphans at least 20 times in 20 different verses. Sometimes they are mentioned as uh, uh, yatim, mm -hmm. singular, mm -hmm. yatim. Sometimes they are mentioned as yatama, mm -hmm. plural. But they have men, been mentioned at least 20 times in the Qur'an. What I understand from, from these verses and from the psychology of being an orphan, what I understand is that the Qur'an emphasizes on the topic of orphans because being an orphan is extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. It's something uh, incomprehensible unless you're an orphan yourself. Otherwise, to be an orphan Mm -hmm. It means to lose a father or a mother. It means if you've lost a father, it means you've lost a major source of love and compassion. Mm -hmm. As children, children have, have two sources of love and support. Mm -hmm. As an orphan, that means you only have one. You don't that have means one. you've lost 50% of your source of love and support. Some orphans have lost both parents which is a major disaster. Yeah, that means you've lost all support, yeah. all, all the source of support and love. When a child loses his or her father, first of all, they've lost love mm -hmm. and support and compassion. Mm -hmm. We human beings, we're very emotional. We like to be uh, loved, embraced, kissed. Yeah, cared about, uh, of course. Uh, there's nothing, nothing feels better than than seeing your father or mother stand there for you, yeah, uh, give you a hug, mm -hmm. embrace you. Some children they come and cuddle in the middle of the night with their parents yeah. because it makes them feel secure. Mm -hmm. Even though there's there's no danger, there's no real danger, but just to come and cuddle with their parents that makes them feel good, that makes them feel secure. No matter what happens, even if the biggest earthquake happens, they're safe. Why? Because they're in between their mother. And their father. Mm -hmm. Fathers and mothers also teach. 
when, a, when an orphan loses a father, that means he's lost a source of knowledge and education and advice. The ones that give us our first pieces of advice is our parents. Of our course. fathers give us the best pieces of advice. Definitely. When you've lost your father, that means you've lost the best advice that anyone could give you. You see, the difference between an advice uh, that, uh, a, that a father could give or mm -hmm. a mother and advice from a regular friend mm -hmm. is that when a friend gives you advice, perhaps he might have his own interests. For example, your friend tells you, um, you know, we graduated from this high school. Now let's apply to college at, let's apply to this university mm -hmm. or that college. Mm -hmm. Why? Because most likely he's going to that college. Yeah. He's going to that university. Thus he'll give you an advice, but part of it is that he has his own advantage, except parents. Parents, when they give you advice, they give you pure advice, sincere advice. Yeah. It has absolutely no interest for them. All their interest is in the child's well-being, his education, his well-being, his health, so on and so forth. And when a child loses his father or mother, mainly father, that means they've lost their financial support. Mm -hmm. They've lost a, care, a, a caretaker. Who's going to bring them money? Mm -hmm. Who's going to make them a living? A father goes out early in the morning and comes back late in the evening and goes through so much work and so much difficulties and problems mm -hmm. only to make sure that this orphan, uh, I'm sorry, his son, but later to be an orphan, mm -hmm. <coughs> lives comfortably, lives lavishly. When that father is gone, that means they've lost a major support of income and financial, uh, financial income, financial support. Mm -hmm. Thus, for these various reasons, a father is a source of love and comfort. A father is a source of wisdom and knowledge and advice. And a father is a source of uh, financial support. When an orphan loses a father, he loses all of these things. The Quran emphasizes on orphans. Another point mm -hmm. is that at many times, orphans get abused. They get abused, as we shall see. Mm -hmm. They get abused by family members. You see that a lot. Uh, by uncles. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even by their mothers or by their stepfathers. Stepfathers. When their mother marries, the stepfather, he's not going to be like the regular father. A regular father has patience. Mm -hmm. If his son starts screaming at the, in the middle of the night, it's normal. But a stepfather, he might get up and he'll, he'll hit the child yeah. because it's not his son. They will get abused financially. The father might have inheritance left for his children. They'll get abused. Mm -hmm. The uncles, the relatives, they'll take away their money. And this occurs all the time. For these reasons and others, in addition to the pain, the psychological pain, the emotional trauma that this orphan will live with for decades. Mm -hmm. For these reasons, the Quran emphasizes on orphans. Inshallah, that's actually very significant because when it comes, you mentioned supporting the orphan. Uh, when it comes to supporting orphans, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, stays in the Holy Quran chapter 4 uh, and give to the orphans their property and do not substitute worthless things with their good things that they have and do not devour their property. We see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us, com is commanding us in that. So, uh, what's the duty? towards the money of orphans? We see several verses mm -hmm. in the Quran that address the topic of money of orphans. Mm -hmm. The money of orphans. Mm -hmm. In one verse. Mm -hmm. Do not even go near him. Ahsan. Because some think that, especially uncles mm -hmm. or grandfathers, mm -hmm. they say, you know what? This orphan is now in my house. I'm spending on him. Yeah. He has money, oh, inheritance you. from his father. Yeah. He has $5,000, $10,000. Why don't I use this money? Let me spend it on him. Or let me, let me take the money myself. Me, yeah. Or take it as a loan. The Quran says, don't even go near it. 
Mm-hmm. You see, the Quran doesn't say don't use it. It doesn't say wala tastamilu mal al yatim. It says wala taqrabu mal al yatim. Don't even go near it. Put them stay away from. Stay it. away from it. Yeah. Stay away from the from the money of orphans. Mm-hmm. Don't go near it. Illa billati hi ahsan unless unless lest it has an advantage for that orphan. Let me give you an example. Mm-hmm. This orphan has five thousand mm-hmm. dollars inheritance from his father. You hear of a project. If you make an investment in this project, the five thousand dollars within one year will become ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars. This will benefit the orphan. This is Allah billati hi ahsan. This will benefit the orphan. Make an investment. That's fine. You're, you're helping the orphan in that way. Mm-hmm. Another verse. وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا مَا لِلْيَتِيمِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ حَتَّى يَبْلُغَ أَشُدَّهِ وَأَوْفُوا بِالْعَهْدِ إِنَّ الْعَهْدِ كَانَ مَسْئُولًا You will be held accountable. Mm-hmm. You were trusted with this money yeah. from the orphans. Don't, make, don't let it go away. And another verse. وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا مَا لِلْيَتِيمِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ حَتَّى يَبْلُغَ أَشُدَّهِ and another verse, وَابْتَلُوا الْيَتَامَى حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغُوا النِّكَاحِ فَإِنْ آنَسْتُمْ مِنْهُمْ رُجْدًا فَادْفَعُوا إِلَيْهِمْ أَمْوَالُهُمْ وَلَا تَأْكُلُوهَا إِسْرَافًا وَبِدَارًا mm-hmm. While this orphan is a child, before he reaches the age of puberty, don't take this money for yourself. Don't mm-hmm. eat this money. Don't use it on yourself. This is forbidden. Uh, in another verse, this, is, this verse, the following verse shows how terrible it is mm-hmm. to take the money of orphans. Mm-hmm. Those who take the money of orphans and they eat it, eat it meaning what? They spend it. Mm-hmm. They spend that money. They buy food. They buy homes, land. They're actually eating hellfire. They're putting hellfire in their stomach. To this, to this degree. Thus, we have to be very careful when it comes to the money of orphans. Right now, in Iraq, in other countries, there is several organizations for orphans, mm-hmm. charities for, orga- uh, for, for orphans. Mm-hmm. There's lots. Maybe in Iraq we could count over a hundred. hundred is nothing. And the thousands of organizations dedicated for orphans. They collect charities. These organizations have to be extremely careful. Mm-hmm. regarding their spending no Not extra money. spending whatsoever whatsoever no extra spending no big signs uh, lavish offices uh, lots of air conditioning nice cars just in the name of organizations orphans for orphans, orphans yeah. we'll be held accountable for this of course <laughs> even employees that work at such organizations if they come an hour late they come an hour late. Yet they're being paid for that hour? Yeah. They're, t- they're taking money from orphans. They, they have to give in return. They have to give for that money. Thus, these organizations have to be extremely careful. Inshallah. Uh, how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instruct us to sponsor the orphans? And what does the Quran have to say about it? We see several verses, another category of verses that mentions uh, giving money Mm -hmm. to orphans. Those who give money, even though they need the money, they love the money. Who doesn't have, who doesn't love money? The Quran says, Mm -hmm. regarding human beings. Human beings love money. Have you ever met a human being that doesn't love money? Honestly, I haven't. All, All people love money. Yet, those who love money, yet at the same time, they still give it to orphans and poor people. In a verse, وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ And good, the good is to believe in Allah in the day of judgment. وَالْمَلَائِكَ and the angels. Mm-hmm. وَالْكِتَابِ and the books. وَالْنَبِيِّينَ and prophets. وَآتَ الْمَالَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ ذَوِ الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمِسَاكِينَ And those who give money while they love that money to the uh, the family of the Prophet, mm-hmm. and orphans and poor people. We see the Quran encourages us to give, to give to orphans, sponsor orphans. Mm-hmm. And another verse, 
يسألونك ماذا ينفقون They ask you يا رسول الله What should we give How should we spend our money mm-hmm. We like to give our money in good causes mm-hmm. How The Quran says قل ما أنفقتم من خير فللوالدين والأقربين واليتامى والمساكين The Quran encourages them to spend your money on your parents mm-hmm. number one two your close family members three orphans number three orphans and then others والمساكين ومن السبيل to, to support this mm-hmm. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to emphasize on s- sponsoring orphans mm-hmm. especially in the month of Ramadan and his famous sermon uh, his istiqbal shay Ramadan when mm-hmm. he gave his famous sermon to welcome the month of Ramadan one of the one of the sections he said regarding the month of Ramadan mm-hmm. one of the good deeds of the month of Ramadan وَتَرَحَّمُوا عَلَىٰ أَيْتَامِ النَّاسِ وَتَرَحَّمْ عَلَىٰ أَيْتَامِكُمْ have mercy on the orphans of people in this month mm-hmm. and Allah will make sure that he will have mercy on your mm-hmm. orphans on, on your orphans and in a hadith he mentioned Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, "Ana wa kafilu yatimi kahatain." Myself and he, who sponsors an orphan, are like this in paradise. And he put two fingers together. He put two fingers, meaning he who sponsors an orphan mm-hmm. will be the next door neighbor of Rasulullah in paradise. Ana wa kafilu yatimi kahatain fil jannah wa jama abaina sababatay. He put these two fingers together. Thus, there's a lot of emphasis on sponsoring orphans. MashaAllah. Uh, when it comes to sponsoring orphans, I mean, you mentioned in the last sermon uh, of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Sha'baniyyah, um, he also states in that sermon, uh, when you fast in this month, in the blessed month of Ramadan, uh, you should remember the hunger and thirst of the people, of the orphans and the poor people, Excellent. as you mentioned. Um, so what is the emotional care for orphans? How should we care and, uh, yeah. Um, this is a very good point. A lot of people, they think when they hear of orphans, mm-hmm. for example, when I travel, uh, people ask me that we've heard uh, you have an orphanage. Your father has an orphanage in Karbala or mm-hmm. there's a lot of orphans in Karbala and in Iraq. I tell them yes. As soon as I say yes, they put their hands in their pocket. Immediately, when people think of orphans, they immediately think of money. Mm-hmm. This is nice. Yes, orphans... Uh, Poor orphans need money, but that's only half of the story. The other half is that orphans need em- emotional, emotional support. Care, yeah. Like we stated in the beginning, when an orphan loses his father, he doesn't just lose financial support, he mm-hmm. loses emotional support. Orphans need someone to be there for them, to guide them. Definitely. To show them love and compassion. And that's one of the things that uh, organizations that sponsor orphans really need to consider. It's not just pass out money. Every anyone can pass out money. That's a great deed. Mm-hmm. I don't wish to, you know, lower lower mm-hmm. that deed. Let's give all the money that we can to orphans. But at the same time, let's make it a part of our agenda for organizations that deal with orphans. Let's go to their homes. Let's take a flower during the month of Ramadan mm-hmm. and go to their homes. Let's sit with them. You know, one of the best deeds, one of the best deeds to do for an orphan is to brush his head. Brush the head of an orphan. There's a hadith by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that when you brush the head of an orphan, how many hairs, how many hairs did you brush? Underneath every hair there's a, an angel asking Allah to forgive you. Masha this is an emotional Allah. care. Maybe you don't have money. We have emotions to give to this orphan. Mm-hmm. Call him Baba. Call him my son. Use emotional words with these orphans. Mm-hmm. This, this will uplift uplift them emotionally the Quran says mm-hmm. say good words to them mm-hmm. say good words to them and another verse and be good kindness Kindness to orphans. Mm-hmm. Kindness to orphans could be with words. If you don't have the money to be kind to them, you have the words to be kind to them. You have the, you have the words mm-hmm. to show them kindness. In another verse, فَأَمَّ الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ 
don't 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 ever make an orphan sad mm -hmm. don't make a, an orphan sad always try to make the orphan smile make him happy in other words be, be good be kind be kind honor the orphan mm -hmm. that's actually very very significant when you said that whole chapter discusses a significant orphan Ahsan. in history Ahsan. and uh, even when he was small I mean some people say that an orphan has a, a specific age but that specific person shall will talk about it um, he was oppressed throughout his life I mean from the first day in his house until he his, his martyrdom or death he was oppressed so uh, who are the famous uh, Orphans in history, if you will. Uh, like, uh, like you said, my dear brother, the Quran tells us of the greatest human being on earth. Mm -hmm. The greatest human being that ever existed was an orphan. Rasulullah mm -hmm. The greatest human being. The Quran reminds him. Mm -hmm. The Quran reminds him that you're an orphan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we took care of you. أَلَمْ يَجِدْكَ يَتِيمًا فَآوَى وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًا فَهَدَى وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم opened his eyes to this world without a father mm -hmm. his father Abdullah died while Rasulullah uh, while uh, Rasulullah's mother was still pregnant mm -hmm. Amina Amina bint Wahab she was pregnant while her husband Abdullah passed away Rasulullah came into this world without a father. At the age of six, he lost his mother. Mm -hmm. They were on their way in the desert to an area called Al Rabada. Mm -hmm. uh, Amr ibn Tawab was going to see her family members. Mm -hmm. She died in the middle of the desert. Rasulullah was by himself, and his mother died. His grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, uh, alayhi salam, began to take care of him. Mm -hmm. At the age till the age of thirteen. At the age of thirteen, Abdul Muttalib died. Yani Rasulullah had one loss after Very the other. Hardship. One loss after the other. Yeah. And then his uh, uncle Abu Talib mm -hmm. began to take care of him. And then Abu Talib also passed away. Thus, the Quran re reminds Rasulullah, "Alam fa'awa." Weren't you an orphan? Yet we we took you in. We took care of you. And this shows us that an orphan who doesn't have a father, who doesn't have a source of, as we said, source of support love. and love, a source of knowledge and education and wisdom, and a source of financial support, yet an orphan can become the greatest human being on earth. Mm -hmm. And there's another orphan, there's another orphan who we believe will be the savior of humankind. Al-Imam Al-Mahdi, Allah Ta'ala, Imam al-Mahdi was an orphan. Yeah. His father, Imam al-Hassan al-Askari, died at the age of five. And then he went into disappearance. Mm -hmm. This is in our theological creed. This is our theological creed that we believe Imam al-Mahdi was an orphan. And he was born in the year 256. Not that he will be born in the mm -hmm. future as some uh, yes, schools of thought yeah. say. No, he was born. He will be the greatest human being. He will be the savior of humankind. Other famous orphans, Imam Ali Imam Ali, Imam Ali was also an orphan. When his, uh, when his father died, Abu Talib, Imam Ali was still young. He was maybe 13 or 14 years old. He was a teenager. Uh, Fatima Zahra was an orphan. When her mother Khadija died, she was very young. He was very young. Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein, they were orphans. When their mother, Fatima al Zahra, died, they were three, four, five years old. They hadn't reached six. Thus, we see that the greatest people in history were orphans. Yet, look at what they, where they reached. They reached top positions of Islam. Thus, this gives hope to all orphans. And this gives us hope. That just because when we see an orphan, it doesn't mean that this orphan has no future. 
In fact, this should drive us to take care of this orphan. Orphans have a lot of potentials. If an orphan is given a lot of attention, a lot of support, a lot of education, not just financial support. If we take care of this orphan educationally, this orphan can become a great human being with a lot of potential and a lot of, a lot of accomplishments. And if this orphan is neglected, he could become Namrud. Namrud was an orphan. Mm -hmm. Saddam Hussein was an orphan. And we saw how it turned out. Saddam Hussein was neglected. Who took care of him? He grew up on the streets. When yeah. an orphan is not raised properly, he's not put in a good school. If the community does not take care of him, he'll be raised Definitely. in the streets and he'll become a person like Saddam Hussein. Yeah, community plays a significant role in the life of orphan. Absolutely. Inshallah. So, uh, inshallah, we will conclude. If you don't have anything to say, um, conclude the night, inshallah. There's one thing I'd like to say. Mm -hmm. That here in Iraq, we have hundreds of thousands of orphans. Yeah. Hundreds of thousands. They're forced into forced labor. They have to work. Yeah. Five, six, seven years old. They're working. They're forced into begging. Walking the streets of Karbala and other places, you see young children begging. Yeah, we and you know that this becomes a habit. It does, yeah. He'll grow up, uh, he'll, he'll be 20 years old and he, he'll be used to begging. They're not in schools. They're homes. I don't know if, if you can even call them homes. And at the same time, we have politicians that are living like kings. Yeah, their salaries are like kings. Their cars, their bodyguards, their homes. Is this fair? Is this fair? And we have politicians in Iraq that claim to be followers of Ahlul Bayt. Where, where is this in the teaching of Ahlul Bayt yeah. that you live like a king and we have orphans like this? Was this how Imam Ali was? Imam Ali السلام, would live with the people. Yeah, he, would he would cry when he would see orphans. The father he would of the orphans. He, would, he was the father of orphans. Yeah. How many politicians do we have today are fathers of orphans? that take care of these orphans. That's sad to see. This is an important point, my dear brother, and I hope my audience will take this into consideration and, and give this message that in Iraq, politicians have to pay attention to this point. Definitely. That where, where are the caretakers of these orphans will be held mm -hmm. accountable under their judgment. وَقِفُوهُمْ إِنَّهُمْ مَسْئُولُونَ They are responsible. Insha'Allah. Uh, respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, I would like to thank you for tuning in and watching uh, our show. And if anyone missed uh, a part of the show, it can go on our uh, YouTube channel uh, at Imam Hussain TV3. And also, if you want to join our discussion uh, with Sayyid by asking him any questions, you can also log on to uh, our social media networking uh, at uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and other uh, WhatsApp and other. Uh, Social networking, networking websites, um, and uh, inshallah, stay tuned for the other episodes at Imam Hussein 3 TV and stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Sheikh Afridi. Inshallah.